Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Raftery, and I'm with Projects RH in Sydney. Tonight, I've been asked to speak briefly about infrastructure. Infrastructure is a really critical part of our economy in that it involves large amounts of money building significant assets. These assets can be community assets such as roads, ports, airports, and they can be private assets such as oil refineries, power stations, gas liquefaction plants. What's important is in the current economy, how we finance them. So private sector assets are largely an issue for the private sector to fund, but the community assets being hospitals, schools, prisons, are increasingly becoming a challenge. What we have is a the community demand for services and an inability of government to fund them. What we have from that is the government wants to provide the modern tools of society such as telecommunication infrastructure, modern water systems, ultra fast transport. And the question is, how does it fund it? And who is the best person to actually provide the system? This challenged the Thatcher government in particular, and they returned to something that had existed many years before. And these were called public-private partnerships, where the private sector would get a concession, say for 30 years, to build a road. It would agree with government a service level called community service obligation. And then it would be entitled to charge tariff or toll for those 30 years. Government would agree review mechanisms so that if things went unexpected, there was a way for both parties to work together. A common example was of that is where another lane is needed on the road or another intersection is required. But equally, an unexpected event like COVID where government closes the roads for three months has led to a number of reviews of long-standing PPP contracts. How infrastructure is funded is of great interest to Projects RH because financing projects is in our DNA. Projects RH is involved in a number of community infrastructure asset financings, including um, solar power stations, a coal project, a port infrastructure project in Colombia, and an oil refining project in Sri Lanka. These are large projects. They have economic significance to the country in which they're built, both directly and indirectly. I mean, they create jobs in the immediate term and in the long term. And most importantly, they generally stimulate more economic activity. The question for government is, how can they pay and what should they pay? In many areas, the infrastructure actually creates new streams of revenue. So for example, if the government wants an office building built, it may be the first tenant of that building, but over its economic life, other people will tenant the building. Equally with a toll road, a toll road will have people who use this road because it it's faster or easier or better for their vehicle, and they will make an economic contribution. They pay tolls. What's important is that government actually has to sit there and balance its own economy. That is, it has tax revenue and can only spend so much on each area of the budget. So in these days, the government has substantial amount of recurrent expenditure commitment. They've got to pay pensions, they've got to put, pay for schooling, 
etc. They don't have a lot of discretionary income. What they can do is use their ability to allow people to pay fees to have infrastructure built. We are seeing this in an encouraging of the major telecommunication companies to build the 5G network. This is being funded by the private sector and people will eventually pay for this through the use of their mobile phones or other devices. What's important is that we all understand and see the value this creates. I hope you found this instructive. My name is Paul Raftery from Projects RH. Good evening.